I'm back from Spain, and oh man, it was a great trip. And I'm dressed like a bum right now because I have locked myself in the house. I've gone into hermit mode, and I'm just editing, editing, editing as much as I can. I've, I've only gotten through like one and a half days of six days of riding. There's just too much good stuff. It's, it's ridiculous how fun the riding was, how good it was, hardcore all the way. I cannot wait to show you guys these videos. So of course, if you're on Patreon, you're already watching the videos because I release extended cuts early. But if you're not gonna pony up the three bucks, then Friday will be the first uh, video from the Spain trip and you'll see how great it was. I really didn't know what to expect from this trip. This was my first guided trip. I knew that the scenery was gonna be good. That's kind of what I had been dreaming about for all this time, but the riding was spectacular. I kind of stayed up at the front uh, behind the guide as much as I could because it kind of sorts itself out. I just happened to be one of the fa fastest riders in the group and uh, I was able to stick with the guide and we rode fast, we rode solid, and it, just every day was a blast. It's unbelievable and I'm sure that will come through in the videos. One thing that I wasn't expecting to be so awesome was the food. I'm not a big foodie at all. I'm pretty picky. I do gluten-free, I do dairy-free. So there's always a wrinkle. There's always like a, oh, I can't eat that, can't eat that kind of thing. But this, it was great. Spain is like meat and potatoes, at least in the Basque country. It was so good. I could eat and eat and eat and uh, just fantastic. Totally blew away my expectations with that as well. And the people you meet on the trip are awesome too. The guides were great. Uh, Doug, the owner, he's from Scotland, he was great. A bunch of British people were on the trip and a guy from South Africa, a guy from France, just all kinds of great personalities. We all got along and all had such a great time. So one of the crazy things about the trip was seven out of the 10 people on the trip were returning. Like they'd already been on a Basque MB, MTB trip. Not necessarily this one, because there's a couple different flavors that Doug offers, but Man, is that not the ultimate endorsement for a trip if people come back year after year? And of course, it's a little easier for people in Europe. I, it's probably like a two hour plane flight from London down to, <laughs> to Spain compared to Sacramento to Dallas, Dallas to Madrid, Madrid to San Sebastian, on and on. So I, I had quite some trials and tribulations just flying with my bike, but it all worked out. And I will have a video about flying with my bike. A lot of people have requested it. I've been meaning to do it for a long time now, but every time I've been flying with my bike, I've been in like crunch time. I don't have time to like set up the camera and talk and kind of take it slow. So that'll be coming soon as well. So my number one tip, if you're going on a mountain bike holiday and they offer you a rental bike, take it, rent the bike. Don't fly with your bike. Don't bring your crappy bike. <laughs> like just take their bike, use it, abuse it, and then you can wash your hands of it when you're done. My bike performed awesome. Unless you have a brand new 2017 Bronson with a Knight composite carbon wheels and DVO suspension, then bring your bike because it'll be friggin' fantastic. But everybody else's bike blew up at one point or another. Like it was just ridiculous. Like there's always something going wrong, especially when you've got 10 different people. It, it, it gets to be kind of funny, like where it's like, oh, this is broke, oh, that's broke. But it didn't detract from the experience at all. It's just like, you know, if, if you, spend 300 bucks, rent their bike, use it, abuse it, and be done with it. And this trip really, really made me wanna learn Spanish. And uh, that's one of the things I always say to you guys in the comments. So you guys always say, oh, I wish I could go to Moab. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. And I, I, I always try to reply with, first you wish, then you do. You just, we're all dreamers. We all want to do stuff, but you actually have to take that first step to accomplish your goals. So I might be kind of a hypocrite here saying, oh, I wish I could learn Spanish and not take action to do it. But it was fun. I could, I've could i taken like one semester of college Spanish and played around with Duolingo. It's an app on the iPhone to kind of get Spanish going. So I could hear and understand little bits and pieces here and there. And it was kind of fun to be able to order my meal and all that stuff and uh, understand poquito, un poco. So in other news, I'm pretty much ready to retire my Feutech wearable gimbals. Uh, one of them kind of seems to drift north a little bit too much, and the other one has gone into the wild like flip-flop mode. Uh, I actually thought I wasn't gonna be able to record one of the days because it started going crazy and I couldn't, couldn't tame it, but I was able to get into the van, get my backup out. But I have 
two other gimbals now. So I have the Rider M by Zion Tech, and they sent me that, and I had all kinds of trials and tribulations with that one. And then Evo Gimbals just sent me their wearable gimbal as well. So I'm gonna spend the next week or so testing those out, making sure I can depend on them. Because that's the thing with the Feiyu Tech, I, I know how it works, it goes, it's dependable, even though now, after about six months of heavy use, I don't think anyone's probably used their gimbals as much as I have. So six months, they're pretty much done now, and I'm gonna move on to these these other two gimbals, which are very similar. So the Evo Gimbals SS wearable gimbal is actually a version of the Zion Tech Rider M. So they're very similar, they're a little different. I've read that the components inside of the Evo version are upgraded. And the huge benefit of the Evo Gimbals version is that when it breaks, or if it breaks, you send it back to Bend, Oregon, and you deal with a person that speaks English. <laughs> so I've had to deal with uh, Zion Tech and send, it, send the gimbal back to China, and that was no fun. <laughs> so the American company, you can send it back to them. It's still made in China, but uh, I think that'll be a, a great benefit for me if I, if I happen to need it. And it's got like a one-year warranty too, so pretty solid. And on Amazon, if you look at the prices, the prices are the same. So you got to go with the Evo at that point, right? So I need to get back on the computer, get to editing all this footage. You guys are going to love it. Stay tuned for Friday. It's going to be a blast. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the trail.